For more information on my programs, please visit masajadi.com. That's M A S S A J A D Y.com. Hello, this is Masajadi, and welcome to my podcast, Exponential Intelligence. This is episode 125, Live Conversations with Dead People, Part 2. In this episode, I finished my conversation with the spirit of deceased physicist Stephen Hawking. This is the first time in a series of episodes where I will be chatting with people who have crossed over. And the reason why we do this is that it allows us to say understand the consciousness that they tapped into to become who they are, not only become who they are, uh, but the great ideas, great concepts, um, great benefits that they've brought into uh, society for us. Uh, so we understand it at a deeper level. We understand them at a deeper level. And then perhaps for those people who are interested, uh, further uh, continue uh, that consciousness or continue the work from that consciousness to benefit humanity. So that's the reason why we do that. Now let's get back to our conversation with Stephen. Do humans have the capacity to ever understand the universe? Uh, it's a very interesting question. Uh, and sadly to say, um, you know, most humans are not say, evolved enough, uh, even at genius level, uh, we are not evolved enough because we're too insecure to understand who we are. Uh, we need to get past uh, the abuse, uh, the control, uh, all those shortcomings that we think we are to understand or help us understand the universe. So uh, do they have the capacity? Of course we always have a capacity. Uh, but the question is, will we use the capacity that we have? Uh, and from history, thousands of years, uh, we seem to be repeating the same errors. So why have we not learned from thousands of years? Why do we keep making the same mistakes? So I ask you, do humans have the possibility rather than, say, the capacity? Uh, two different questions. So, uh, very definitive Although these are uh, great questions, uh, you can expand them in many different ways. So, um, uh, can you tell us a thing or two about the universal intelligence? <coughs> well, one thing. Again, this is Stephen. Uh, one thing, the universal intelligence that um, I, highly, I highly admired uh, is very minimal to the universal intelligence that's actually out there. Uh, the universal intelligence uh, far exceeds uh, any capacity or any limitation, even if we were at 100% of our, say, timeless being, or what you would call, if you believe in God and spirit, spirit. Uh, I would call it a timeless being. Um, not to mince words or not to uh, distort the idea or concept. Uh, so that timeless being that we are, even at that level, which is, um, if you put a number to it, uh, and we'll use a, a larger, say, reference uh, framework, uh, zero to 100,000. And again, this is very minimal to what it could be. Okay. Um, the universal knowledge or the universal intelligence, say, that we aspire to right, as human form uh, would be less than, say, 0.1 or 0.2 on the scale of 1 to 100,000, the level that we're at. Okay. Now, imagine 100,000 uh, being that universal intelligence or what humans, most humans, um, and even non-humans, uh, or even he's jokingly telling me atheists, um, would call God. 
uh, hundred thousand, say, would be that high level, say, God level, right? or what we call the ultimate universal intelligence. Again, all knowing, all being. Um, our capacity would only reach <clears throat> at a hundred percent of our timeless being that we are uh, would be about 50,000, um, around 50, uh, 40 to 50,000. So, um, so we still have this level. So we come into, say, what I, what I would call, what as Moss, uh, say, superhuman status. If we were completely awakened to our timeless being, we would ascend to, say, 50,000. Let's just put it that way. We would still have another 50,000 points to go to uh, even understand that higher intelligence or again, a God. So, uh, and right now, uh, again, humans, <clears throat> uh, point one, point two, uh, one, one percent at max, let's say. Um, so the notion of people using, say, 10 or 14 percent of their capacity, brain capacity, yes. Uh, that would be true about four, ten, fourteen percent. But using our say um, abilities would drop down to about one percent. Have you gained new understandings uh, about the time and space uh, since your passing? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, there are uh, as different levels or different uh, measurements of time and space, uh, and in some universes, uh, a third uh, variable. Uh, and I can't, and he's trying to explain it to me, but I'm um, sorry, guys. Uh, I can't understand it. Well, uh, well, it's just a variable that I don't think I could ever say explain. So just give me a second here. <sighs> So what he's saying uh, of time and space, again, there are millions of um, or trillions of different, say, variables of time and space. Uh, and then, then in some realities, uh, a more precise reality, not as dense, uh, but more precise. Okay? Uh, so it's, it's, say, a newer, say, experiment. Um, so there's... <clears throat> space and time, right? the two dimensions that this these realities are created, again, that fourth coordinate. Um, in some more other precise realities, um, there's a third variable. So it's space and time. Uh, and then that third variable, what he's telling me, and uh, again, I'm sorry, I can't understand it because it's way beyond uh, my level. But I bet scientists or you know, quantum physicists, you know, if I described it, or actually I could, if I could, say, work on, you know, those type of individuals, uh, bring that conscious in consciousness of Stephen Hawking's in, uh, those individuals would understand it. So uh, I invite any of those quantum physicists that are out there uh, uh, to get a hold of me uh, and see if I could, you know, uh, we could work on you to understand uh, what Stephen was saying. But basically, in a nutshell, from what I'm seeing, again, in layman's terms, um, so space and time, the third corner coordinate would be, say, uh, a combination <clears throat> of space and time in certain degrees, uh, creating almost, say, another, um, another variable, um, very different than uh, of the two. So those two variables combined um, would create, say, a whole different uh, component, variable. So, for example, you know, you are a reflection, uh, what he's telling me, you are a, a reflection of your mom, mother and father, right? And then the lineage before it. So, uh, again, um, in this third variable, uh, the two come together, space and time, 
uh, and there's no reflection. It's just something very different or very new uh, that comes about. So, uh, very interesting. Uh, and it's the reason why it's so precise. Um, it's almost like a GPS system. You know, they use three coordinates to locate exactly where you are. Uh, it gives you, say, more precise um, coordinates, I guess, uh, to locate exactly where you are. So um, this is Moss speaking. So this backs up uh, what I see on, say, our abilities or becoming abundant. It's all about space and time. But from a very, very different perspective. Well, uh, what's your theory of happiness? Uh, you know, a theory of happiness I never understood um, because um, most of us don't understand ourselves to understand happiness. How can you understand happiness uh, if you don't understand yourself? Uh, happiness for many individuals. Uh, seems like uh, again, this is Stephen, um, that consciousness, uh, and it's a mixture of Stephen, by the way, and then um, that higher consciousness or those alien type frequencies. So, uh, kind of like one and the same, really. Um, so, yeah. So most humans again do not understand happiness. Um, happiness is a detached form. Of trying to understand ourselves, uh, and you can never be happy or be completely in a space of oneness or being or uh, a, the true definition of happiness, or as Moss would call it, uh, EI definition uh, of happiness. Uh, it would never exist in this human form because uh, in this human race, uh, nobody understands themselves. Although uh, you know we're getting more uh, and closer and closer to that. Uh, can happiness exist without being fully stood? Of course. And that's the key. Uh, even if you were, say, 20% or 30%, let's throw numbers at it, uh, you'd be far better off than, say, 0 or 1%. Right? So why not go for it? Uh, what do you think about spirituality? Uh, it depends on your definition of spirituality. So let me define spirituality for you, uh, and then that's uh, what I would think about it. So spirituality, uh, and again, ill-defined, uh, has turned into, say, a form, uh, another form of religion, uh, a lot of do's and don'ts. Uh, spirituality in this new definition, and again, far from, say, the definition of my human form or human existence, uh, spirituality, I thought, something that was, say, compressive and oppressive uh, to me. Unfortunately, uh, what happened is that I tapped into a higher intelligence level, and then what happened to me, I was compressed and oppressed. So, uh, ironically, paradoxically, uh, again, not spirituality, so, uh, spirituality, now that I understand it from uh, this higher definition or this higher understanding, um, thanks to Moss, well, uh, I guess I helped them awaken. Wow, cool. So, spirituality in my definition or our definition, so again, the higher beings, Stephen, uh, is an understanding of. Uh, existence or understanding of awareness, a void of space and time. Uh, and to many of you, <clears throat> you might go, well, wow, it seems really cold. Uh, it seems very experimental or scientific. Uh, but if you really understood the formula as, as in anything, even love has a formula, uh, you, you prove the formula to be true, uh, the outcome that you're looking for uh, is in this case, say, in this example, love. Uh, in this case, uh, you would understand spirituality. Uh, however, most people um, put the, uh, the outcome uh, before the equation, uh, and it can never exist. So, so in my definition of spirituality uh, is an understanding.
of all the possibilities uh, that are out there. So an awareness of who we are, void of space and time. And then everything uh, becomes a possibility, uh, which is true spirituality in even, say, the religious standards or religious forms or spiritual standards, uh, which are very dogmatic, uh, where if you're not of a certain bent, uh, of a certain bent, of a certain bent, that's my word, I guess, um, of a certain bent, then you're doing it wrong, uh, which is... Um, which is against all, say, faiths. So, uh, because again, one of the first aspects of non judgment. So, in this case, spirituality, you get to our definition of spirituality, and e, even EI uh, is, uh, is of that same uh, paradigm. You would understand that there is no judgment. Uh, it's just a state of being and a state of, say, choice. Uh, or, uh, what you religious zealots, zealots? Well, he's joking. Um, religious people uh, would call free will. Uh, he's got a really great sense of humor, by the way. Nice. Uh, now that he's free. <clears throat> uh, and as a note, he, Stephen, uh, is back into his, say, complete form, complete being. Um, so he's not crippled in any way. Uh, he is, say, the merging, the highest possibility of human form, uh, and then, say, the alien intelligence, because okay? that's what he wanted. Again, that's his highest possibility for him. And then also the knowledge uh, that surrounds him as well. So uh, the best of all worlds uh, as he's awakened. Um see uh, you were known for not believing in God was it because you thought that God existed uh, he wouldn't give you a life with so many disabilities um, yes that is tr uh, that is not true so let me explain uh, there's a yes and no uh, in the beginning uh, I did not want to believe in God because of the religion and uh, Moss discussed this, uh, that was shoved down. It was very inaccurate, and that's why I did one not want to believe in God. My um, short sighting shortcoming was that I didn't see any possibilities that were available uh, to that. Uh, so as most of us, or scientists, or even like atheists, uh, what we decide is, well, if the religions, uh, you know, they don't hold water, they're full of shit, um, then then uh, then God does not exist. But then just like the universal uh, intelligence that are out there, there are millions of possibilities say that God could exist now that I understand. Uh, as I got older, yes, uh, I did get mad at a God source, although I did not want to believe it. Because right? as I got older, and as I got, say, more connected to higher the higher intelligence, I understood that that there is a higher intelligence, um, and it's very different uh, than uh, any, say, God definition that we describe today. Uh, and again, EI, uh, the closest definition that humans can uh, understand. Uh, and even at that level, uh, it's a good starting point because it does not limit you what EI teaches. Um, but it's a great stepping stone, and that's why it's a free form, or you cannot say attach uh, a completeness, because if you did, uh, then it would turn into another, say, religious or spiritual practice, and that's why uh, EI uh, can be timeless. So, uh, thanks, Stephen. Uh, do you believe in God now? Uh, well, uh, the definition is uh, what we talked about earlier. So, uh, in some respect, uh, higher intelligence, but not the God that most of humanity. Um, to really understand, say, our definition of God, uh, well, we would have to, say, ascend to a high level intelligence to understand God. And again, in many religions, if you look at it, that's what it says. To understand me, 
uh, hence God, uh, understand yourself. So if you understand yourself, the intricate, the details, the the limitless being that you are, uh, you just imagine. You know, most most of most of people uh, look at God from, uh, and we'll put an example because uh, it's easier. Um, oh. Yeah. Gosh, he's funny, and that's why Jesus. He's getting into Jesus. Jesus used parables. Um, so, and as, as an example, um, he is really a funny guy, by the way. <clears throat> um, as an example, uh, you have a ladder, right? It's got a couple hundred thousand rungs on the ladder, um, right? So, you know, humanity looks at God or you know, uh, they get high enough to go. Oh, okay, that's my understanding of God. But you know, you're you're only on, say, the twentieth, or even at most, a hundred or two hundred rungs of a few hundred thousand uh, uh, rungs of the ladder, right? So your perspective, although say it could be accurate, uh, if you remove the filters, uh, that's what you're seeing. So it's accurate. But how about if we say extended our intelligence or a higher, say, a level of understanding through awakening, right? And now we're uh, at a high level, say, a hundred thousandth rung. So look how far we've ascended, right? Look at the heights. Look at, say, the possibilities or what you could see at those heights. Very different. And, uh, and mind you that the rung that you're at, yes, that's your definition, uh, but it's not. Uh, it's a very limited uh, definition. And to understand God or the uh, or the higher intelligence, just note that as you say ascend, uh, your definition of God will say change, exp- um, and as you ascend even higher, obviously very expansive. So compared to what you can see, um, and I want to stress. And that, uh, if the definition of God is not working for you, if you are not in a bliss state, it doesn't mean all the time, but if you do not have, say, that sense of completeness, uh, then your definition of God is very off. Uh, even at, say, the levels that you're at. Uh, It should never be compromised. You should never be compromised. You should never compromise anybody else, anything else, to understand God. Um, So, in that definition, I ask you, uh, is your definition of God? Or what is your definition of God? Uh, And do you believe in God? Uh, or is it something else that you believe? Uh, why didn't you believe in the afterlife? What do you think about it now? Um, <clears throat> the reason why I didn't believe in the afterlife because it was so uh, unproven. Although I had memory, uh, I had memory, um, I had many, um, many experiences say, with the afterlife, uh, that I choose not to remember um, from my mid, uh, mid-20s to 35, 40. So mid-20s to 40. Okay? Uh, I would go into, say, other realities uh, where I literally, say, would talk to people, uh, uncles, uh, yeah, he's showing me uncles, uh, and so on, uh, and men of high stature, actually. Uh, but I would push it away, uh, thinking that I was going mad. Um, <clears throat> how, hence, uh, the destructive nature of my personality uh, as uh, in those uh, years uh, of my life. <coughs> also, talking about the destructive nature of my personality, um, the frequencies uh, that would come in uh, while they're emotionless. Uh, The frequencies that, say, would resonate or would come into me, uh, again, emotionless and the way us beings are or the way human form works is that, um, is that, 
is that uh, your higher self, or what you would call spirit, right, relays its information into a physical understanding. Moss talks about this, uh, the physical understanding uh, through emotions. Right? And that's how, say, that transference of knowledge happens. Hence, the emotions that we feel, the concepts that we feel, get translated into a non-emotional being. So there's that translation piece, uh, again, in EI. Uh, that Moss talks about. Um, <clears throat> so what was distorting and what really, say, angered me, especially as I aged, especially as I lost um, uh, dexterity uh, among uh, uh, the, uh, the soul for living, uh, because I was not human of human form anymore. Um, so uh, throughout those years, uh, to understand, say, the knowledge that came in, well, if the tool used to, say, calibrate or to, say, filter in where we would understand the knowledge or I would understand the knowledge would be through hum uh, emotions, Uh, then uh, a good number of times, and this is what angered me the most, is that, well, uh, uh, this communication from, say, another source would not use, say, the tools of emotion to communicate into human understanding. So imagine, and he's showing me an ear. Uh, oh, okay. So your your ear, and again, I'm not a doctor, guys. This is Moss. Um, he's showing me an ear. Um, so the ear, it's got I don't know, you know, lots of tiny, tiny hairs. Uh, the tiny hairs, you know, they vibrate at a certain frequency, turns into electrical, um, yeah, currents, electrical, yeah, frequencies, electrical, and then your brain understands it as sound. Okay. Uh, and that's how, say, the communication of sound happens to you. Now, what happens is this higher intelligence comes through, uh, and this, uh, it doesn't use sound waves to communicate. So you, the, the, the receptacles of the hair in your ear uh, is proven worthless for you. Uh, although you can, say, sense it, you can hear it, uh, you cannot put it into, say, a sound language that you would understand. Same thing with sight, right? Uh, you have, say, the, the frequencies of, 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 of color coming through, which creates, you know, your vision. Uh, and now there's a higher, there's a different level of frequency that still uses, say, your eyesight to communicate with you, um, but you can't. Uh, the, your eyes do not pick up the frequencies. So it was very frustrating uh, for me uh, at times, and this is where I would want to say explode because I could see the information, I could understand the knowledge, uh, I could just get it at the tip of my tongue, but I could not explain it into much less, uh, not even detail, but just a simple representation. Uh, of what was out there. So a lot of my knowledge was actually boiled down into its simplistic forms. Uh, I, I, one of the biggest regrets uh, I have is that uh, I couldn't create a tool um, which would communicate beyond, say, the emotions that we have. Um, my understanding uh, or what I say, blessed into uh, this world, uh, my part in, say, awakening humanity, which uh, would have been, say, much greater uh, if I could have deciphered at a higher level or created a tool to decipher um, what the knowledge was there, um, which actually opens the door for others who choose to go this path uh, and he laughs 
uh, but you do not have to choose uh, being deformed, by the way. There's other ways of doing it. If you could live all over again, would you change anything about your physical conditions? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, because again, we do not need to be confined in any way okay, to help the world, uh, help yourself, help humanity, uh, help the universe, help the the say the higher knowledge base that are, that is out there. Uh, that is not a prerequisite. Okay, uh, it was a misunderstanding on my part. Uh, if only I had known right, that those frequencies say it was harmful to us, uh, then I would have, say, reset myself or done something to, say, um, um, what you, shield those frequencies. Um, much like, um, and again, he's showing me an example, um, radioactivity. Oh, one second. So radioactivity, um, back in the day when ra uh, radio uh, radioactive components uh, were found, uh, they did not know how harmful it was. So they would put it in baths, uh, high-end hotels, they would put it in makeup. Well, really, wow. Uh, so they would just leave it around. Uh, and then as we knew, this is very harmful, very destructive to us. Well, we created say, safety standards to handle radioactive uh, materials. The same thing with same thing with that understanding. Uh, radioactive materials um, uh, very beneficial for us if used in a safe manner. Same thing with this intelligence that comes through. Uh, anything else? Oh, he really enjoyed. Actually, I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, a very different perspective than you know what you see uh, in the movies or uh, the biography or whatever else uh, that's written about. Stephen, uh, again from my perspective, Moss's view, uh, very brilliant individual, very different, very human. Uh, uh, knowing the deeper workings uh, of Stephen, so and the higher intelligence uh, uh, it seems like what they're saying is that uh, we have a high potentiality uh, to do even grander things uh, in those uh, the level of awareness <coughs> excuse me expands exponentially. Uh, as we get into this next um, vista. So, sounds pretty exciting. So, thank you for that. Uh, so, for my guest, Stephen, thanks for being here. Uh, other <sighs> higher consciousness, uh, again, thank you for tap, allowing us to tap into that higher consciousness. Uh, and for my guests listening to the podcast, guys, thanks. Uh, any comments? This is the first time uh, we've done live conversations with dead people. So if you have any comments, or any ideas, any people, uh, any individual, um, and again, dead, just to respect people's privacies. Um, and, um, uh, so drop me a line. Moss, E-I, M-A-S, E-I, Exponential Intelligence. Okay, masai at masajati.com. Um, drop us a line, any tips, comments, uh, any individual that you'd like me to say read okay, or interview uh, on this series, Live Conversations with Dead People. Let's jump into the meta healing and I'll guide you into that consciousness uh, that Stephen uh, tapped into. This is a meta healing on bringing in not Stephen Hawking's, uh, but his, the consciousness uh, that uh, Stephen Hawking's connected with. So, uh, whether you're sitting or standing or lying down, getting comfortable where you are, just noticing, say, your surroundings, noticing the space around you. Taking that deep breath in.
and then exhaling, letting go whenever you're ready, starting to relax. If you're new, meta healing, where I guide you into a nice deep state of meditation, so we take a deep breath and again, inhaling through the nose, and then I'll work on you on several different layers, right down to your source code. As we exhale, together we combine efforts, and that's where the massive transformations you may have heard about or experienced yourself come about. On the exhale again, just noticing your space, noticing you, noticing you within your environment. And then another breath in, in the same way, holding, uh, releasing, letting go, asking ourselves, <clears throat> how do I connect to pure source even stronger? Again, that question, how do I connect to pure source even stronger? Or if you'd like, how do I become my limitless self? As we settle in, let's settle in into our solar plex, right into the uh, right into the ribs, right between your ribs in front. Whether you think about Stephen Hawking's or you don't, it doesn't matter. And as a note, not bringing the actual Stephen Hawking's. Uh, but pulling in his consciousness or the consciousness that he rose to, to access the knowledge uh, that he blessed us with. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a nice strong deep breath and again, again from the solar plex right between your ribs. Holding. And then releasing. as I generate those frequencies <clears throat> that mimic or take you into the consciousness uh, of Stephen Hawking. And notice how your body feels. Uh, and it's interesting. <clears throat> you might even notice, uh, say, a metallic uh, taste in your mouth. It might not be for all, uh, but for a good number. Good number of listeners. We ascend to those levels of consciousness.
for those who are sensitive. Um, might not be feeling comfortable. Uh, that's because <clears throat> the consciousness that he tapped into is not of human form, hence disturbing uh, your human frequency. So let's see if we can put that uh, filter or what I would call a translation kit, um, transforming those frequencies into a language that won't distort our physical form. a frequency that's beneficial to our human understanding uh, of the intellect that he ascended to. Without destroying the mechanism, hence the physical body uh, of that being. Let's go ahead and take a strong deep breath in from the chest, the solar plex area, again anchoring us down, especially for those who are getting a little distorted. Pulling you back. Go. Noticing your breath. For those who are interested, once uh, that pathway is open to that consciousness, you can tap into it easier with a little practice. Uh, you can re listen to this meta healing if you'd like. I'm just going to go ahead and leave you in this space for as long as you wish, as long as you stay in this space. Uh, you'll 
you be connected to the mastermind. In this case, a little different. Uh, it's the mastermind of not just the group, but the consciousness. Uh, Stephen Hawking has opened up. And it is distorting for a lot of people. Uh, so I'll pull you out. Let's go and take a nice deep breath in for those who want to end the session. On the exhale, noticing the sternum, noticing your bone structure, your skeletal system. Uh, opening your eyes, connecting to something or looking at something inanimate, the carpeting the floor, uh, the wall, ceiling, whatever it might be. Feeling relaxed, refreshed, or if it is a detox, whatever uh, that you might be feeling. This concludes Exponential Intelligence, episode 125, Live Conversations with Dead People, part two. Take care and notice what you notice, and then start noticing the details of what you notice. For more information on my programs, please visit masajadi.com. That's M-A-S-S-A-J-A-D-Y dot com. <laughs>